Hello everyone, welcome to tonight's exercise session. We're going to be doing a mix of Pilates style and yoga style exercises. Um, just before we start, um, just a reminder that with all your exercises, we want to be focused on your lower abdominals along here. So the point is that we want to relax these upper muscles. So try not to suck upwards and we're trying to activate these lower abdominals. Okay, so thinking about a pelvic tilt, if you see the button on my shirt, then we're just taking our pubic bone towards our belly button. Okay, so it's tuck the tailbone under, pubic bone towards your belly button, and your upper abdominals should be relaxed enough that you can breathe, you can talk, you can have a conversation while you're exercising. If you're holding your breath during your exercises, you're probably overworking these upper abdominals and that's not allowing your lower abdominals to work properly. So thinking about posture, if you're a bottom out person like I am, when you're thinking about tucking your tailbone under, bringing your pubic bone towards your belly button and keeping relaxed. If you're a slumper forward and you push your hips forward, a hip hanger we sometimes say, then you're going to have to bring your hips back and then tuck them under, okay? So just trying to remember that as much as you can, try and think about activating your pelvic floor when you're doing your exercises. So imagine going for a wee and stop mid-flow. That's the feeling of doing your pelvic floor. Um, and the other thing is with stretches, only go to about 70% stretch. Any more than that could cause pain. And if you've got any pain doing any of the exercises, just don't do them. Not everyone can do every exercise. And depending on your condition, some of these exercises might aggravate your pain. So if it's very painful doing it, not just a bit of muscle tiredness or soreness, then stop doing that exercise immediately um, and go back to one of the exercises that we're fine. Okay? So starting with a stretch, we're going to reach up towards the ceiling, up onto our toes, if you want to, you stay on your heels, you don't have to look into your toes. Reaching as high as you can. Then we're going to tuck the tailbone under, so you're feeling your glutes activate. And just reach that a little bit further, coming down to your heels, hands down on your side. Tuck your chin under, activating the lower abdominals, taking your belly button towards your pubic bone. We're going to roll down towards the floor nice and slowly. Each vertebrae by vertebrae is a string of curls. You're rolling down. You're using your tiny muscles just to support your spine. In this position, you can bend your knees slightly. You don't have to have straight legs, you don't have to touch the floor, you just feel as far as you can go. Taking nice deep breaths in, and on the out breath, you're just relaxing into the stretch a little bit further. In, and relax a little bit further. On your next out breath, we're going to roll slowly back up as you activate these lower abdominals to support your spine, feeling each level as you come up, rolling up, and then reaching back up again, onto your toes, tailbone tucked under. Reaching a little bit higher with your hands and then coming down, arms down by your side, chin down, lower abdominals activated, and rolling down, vertebrae by vertebrae, rolling down, string of pills, knees slightly bent, and big breath in, and relaxing out. And in, and this time we're going to walk forward on the out breath into a plank position. Now with a plank, it's very important that you don't come beyond straight, okay? In this position, I'm just using my back muscles. So it's almost easier to go slightly higher, and as you go higher, you'll feel your lower abdominals kick in, okay? You don't have to be straight, it makes it a lot harder. If your abdominals are bulging right now, you're doing too much, don't go into it, just come right up, okay? Pushing your chest away from the mat so that you're not sinking down into your shoulders, you're just going to keep your chin tucked in as well, so you're not pushing your chin towards the floor. We're going to step back the hands like rolling back onto your heels, going into the dog stretch. So your heels push down, it doesn't matter if your feet are apart or together. Your bottom goes backwards and up towards the ceiling. At the same time, your chest comes downwards. So try and straighten your knees, push your heels down towards the floor, bottom upwards, chest downwards. Feeling the stretch throughout the body. I'm just holding that for a little moment. Coming back into your plank position and either pop your knees down to come down or you can tuck your elbows backwards and lower yourself down. And then we're going to come up either onto your elbows, 
or up into your hands. And then just try to keep the hips on the mat to stretch along the side. Feeling that stretch of the abdominals. And sitting back onto your heels. You can, if you've got bad knees, just bring your hands forward more so you don't have to bend your knees so far. So you can just relax and stretch through your shoulders. If your knees are okay, you can sit right back onto your heels. And if you pop your elbows to the floor, you get a bit of a stretch through your shoulder blades at the same time. Just relaxing. And then we're going to stand up. So, reaching up, tall as you can, one arm down, the other one up. At the same time as you're stretching up, you're stretching down towards the floor, feeling a stretch of your side muscles. As you start to lower down, bring your top arm over. And again, on each out breath, feel yourself sink up a bit further. Bring your arm back up, the other one back up and swap over. So reach you up with one arm, down with the other arm, slowly lowering down, reaching in opposite, opposite directions, bring the top arm over, and on each out breath, sink a little bit further. And back up again. <clears throat> right, arms in front of you, fingers clenched, hands clenched, and you're just trying to push your hands out in front of you as far as you can, letting your head drop, just feeling a stretch across your shoulder blades as you're reaching towards the end of the room. Then you're going to drop your shoulder blades backwards and downwards so your shoulders are relaxed, okay? Keeping your hands where they are, give yourself a bit of a double chin so you're not sticking your chin out, okay? So it's just a chin and tuck, and you're going to turn your chin towards your shoulder. Again, in this position, don't stick your bottom out, try and tuck your bottom under. You feel the abdominals relax. Back to the middle and to the other side. So you're turning your chin to the other shoulder. Again, make sure it's only 70% stretch because if you stretch too far <coughs> with your neck, you'll just give yourself a headache. Pop your hands down behind you, dropping them down towards the floor. Shoulders backwards and downwards, so relax. Take your ear to your shoulder. If this does cause any neck tension or headache, just don't go as far. And then turn your chin to your shoulder in the same position. And then take your chin towards your armpit. Come back up again, go to your other shoulder. Chin to your shoulder, so just turning your head a bit. And then taking it towards your armpit. And back up again. Then in this position, we're going to lift the hands up behind you. So still clasped. You lift them as high as you can. You can, you can push your chest out first and stick your bottom out to feel stretch across your, your chest muscles. And then if you can, we're going to bend down towards the toes with your hands coming up towards the ceiling. And just feeling that stretch as you take them as high as you can. You can let your head drop, or you can look down to the floor, or you can alternate it. And we're going to roll right up again, using your tummy muscles to come up. Okay, <clears throat> so first exercise, feet shoulder width apart, facing forwards. We're going to go bend the knees, and it's really important that your knees are not rolling inwards. So you're keeping your knees out over your toes, okay? In this position, we're doing a pelvic tilt. All right, so just tilting backwards and forwards. Now, I don't know if you can see my top from there, but my button here, this is my belly button here, it's not moving. I'm just going backwards and forwards, and it's just this lower segment that's moving, okay? I'm not sucking up here to make my belly button come up. I'm not, I'll just side this for you. So we just keep doing this, you're getting as low as your legs feel comfortable, so it's just, lower pelvis moving, okay? You can see with my hands on my belly but it's not moving. We're not doing it from the ribs, okay? So it's just the lower, lower second moving. As you go forward, squeeze the pelvic floor in and then let it go. Squeeze the pelvic floor, let it go. 
And remember to keep your knees over your toes, don't let them roll in. Come up, give your bottom a bit of a tap, your thighs a bit of a tap. If your muscles have eight, just tapping them out, just get through the left and tap. Next exercise, same position again, feet shoulder width apart, bending the knees, keep the knees out wide, you're squeezing the bottom under, so you're pushing your tailbone tucked under, your pubic bone is coming towards your belly button. And you're keeping that position with your upper abdominals relaxed, okay? And we're just lifting it one heel up, the other heel up, both heels up. And we're just going to keep alternating. So you can wait till the one heel is down before you lift the other, or you can lift them at the same time, okay? And then do two legs. Again, however low you want to go, it depends on how strong you feel. You can do it right down here if you want to. You'll be feeling it in your quads and keep your bottom tucked under. So it's very tempting. Your bottom's tucked under as you go low, sit the bottom out as you're doing it. So we're keeping that bottom tucked under. And you're looking for a nice control. So if your hands on your hips are not moving, and stand up. Give your legs a little shake, tap the bottom, tap the thighs, and another stretch. So your feet apart, and we're just going to stretch the inner thighs. So put probably your hands down to the mat, we're just going to walk your feet as far as you feel comfortable. Again, 70% stretch, don't over stretch it. Make sure you're not wearing socks at this point that cause your feet to slip apart and cause injury. Best to do your Pilates without socks on if possible. And again, just relax and down. If you want to bend your knees, it takes the pressure off the back of the knees, so you get stretched down the length of the leg. Now bring your feet back a little bit towards each other, enough that you can grab one ankle with both your hands, take your head towards your knee, Hold the stretch there. Then go to the other side, grab the ankle or as far as you reach, and take your head to that side. And back to the middle. For the next exercise, you don't have to have it, but it's quite useful if you've got a bit of elastic or you could use um, the, your dressing gown. Um, Tie and just tie it in a circle like this. This is a bit of elastic, um, and it's just a very, it's not very strong. It's not about me doing that exercise, it's just putting a little bit of pressure there to get very rotated and activating. And in this position, we're going to do a lunge forward. So we're going to step forward, and as I lunge, my hands go up. Okay, so it's a really good exercise for activating my, my um, shoulder muscles, the rotator cuff. As I go forward, just look at my knees and try to make sure that they're staying absolutely in line. I don't want them rolling inwards like that. If you notice, if you've got a mirror in front of you to do this at home, and you notice that your knee rolls inwards like that, it's usually a sign that your glutes are a bit weak. Okay, so try to keep your knee going forwards and over your toes. You don't have to get that low. You can do a little bit of adjustment, so you can just step forward, okay? This is more about shoulder blades and your rotator cuff as an exercise than it is about your legs. Okay, you can either do it with the elbows bent and just go straight up, or you can do it with the arms straight. That's a bit harder, all right? And doing the movement of the legs while you're doing the exercise really helps to activate those rotator cuff muscles, help shoulder problems. I'm just putting a little bit of pressure on the elastic. And stop there. So, feet apart, arms out, gonna reach towards the opposite side of the room, down, and just waving the arm. Back up again, reach towards the opposite side, down, and wave. Reach, down, Wave, reach, down, wave. Reach, down, wave. And reach, down, and wave. Then we're going to rotate. Reach towards your opposite foot, looking up at your top hand. Then come up, 
Rotate towards the opposite foot, touching your toes, looking up at your top hand. So come up, rotate the body, reach towards your opposite toes, and look up at your top hand. Up, rotate, reach towards your opposite foot, looking up at your top hand, and come up. So we're going to do a balance exercise now. So come off your mats because that doesn't help you balance. So you're standing on a nice hard floor. With your balance, it all comes from your bottom loops. So if you want a good balance, don't stick your bottom out and you're going to go everywhere. So tuck that bottom one to give yourself some balance. Okay, doesn't matter if you lose it. Popping your hands on your hips, we're going to try and do a nice big figure of eight. So your foot is in front of you for the first part of the eight and behind you for the second bit. So in front of you and behind you. Try and focus on something that's not moving. So if there's something on the wall or on the floor, it's not moving, change direction. Doesn't matter if you lose your balance. You're trying to aim to stay as upright as possible. I'm looking at my moving body on the screen. Probably not helping. <laughs> and pop your foot down. Give your bottom attack. Change legs. So nice big circle in front. Circle behind. Front. Behind. Front. Behind. Change direction. Now, again, don't let your back arch too much while you're doing this. You're keeping your tailbone tucked under, keeping that bottom activated the whole time. So in front and behind. Just do one of the side profiles. That's what we're doing. Front and behind. Pop your leg down. Then standing on the other leg. Again, activate your glutes by tucking your tailbone under. You're going to lift the leg up. Try and straighten it. Bring it down. Take it out to the side. Bring it down. And take it backwards and down. So bring it up. Straighten it. Down. Out to the side. And down. And backwards without arching your back. You're going to take it back a little bit and down. So bring it up. Straighten it and down, out to the side and backwards. <clears throat> Change legs. Give your bottom a tap. So lift it up, straighten it, down, out to the side and backwards. Up, straighten it and down, out to the side and backwards. If you look at my upper body, it's not really moving. And my back's not arching and giving, it's staying the same because my tailbone is tucked in. Pop your leg down, give your back to the tap. <clears throat> and that's the last balance exercise, just change legs again. So one leg out to the side, your arms that are out to the side. If it's your first time, you can just stay in this position and come back to the middle, and then come out again, come back to the middle. If you are happy with your balance, if you're happy, you've got space, you're not going to fall and hurt yourself, you can start to just lean forward and you're aiming to go to Superman position. So you're looking at something on the floor that's not moving, back leg up, hands stay out to the side. If you're coming back up, don't let your foot touch the floor. Have your arms nice and straight and you're going forwards again. If you're really, really happy with your balance, at this point, you can take one arm down and the other one up. And then back to the middle and back down again and bring the leg down and with the bottom attack. Again, make sure that you're not going to fall and hurt yourself in the knees. So change legs, so leg out, arms out, and you're just coming forward. Feel free to stay in that position. You don't have to come forward into this forward position. Okay. And again, lean forward. Up. And if you want to, you can come forward and you can rotate one arm up, one arm down, coming back, and then back up and down. Give your bottom tap. So, one more of these sort of exercises. We'll just do a quad stretch. So, in the middle, let's say grab your foot and stretch. Now if you're doing it, you can hold on to the, a wall for this, 
Try and make sure your hips are the same height so you're not dropping on the one side. So bring your hips to the same height and try and bring your knees together. So if your knees really forward, push it backwards, bring your knees towards each other's touch and feel that stretch increase. If you can't grab your foot because it's too stiff, you can rest it on, on a chair behind you and get a similar stretch by pushing your hips forward. Okay, swap sides. And you stretch again. Second the bottom under, hold that foot. Try and bring your knees back together. Try and tuck your bottom under. Don't stick your bottom out, it's just cheating. So you're squeezing your bottom under, bring your knees together and keep your hips the same height. Turn around. Okay. Um, last exercise we're going to do is standing. We're going to bend the knees in our squat position. We don't want knees in, we want knees out over your toes, tailbone tucked under. Okay, so again, we're going in this position. Hold that position, and in that position, we're just going to do some arms shoulder circling. So, got your knees bent. And with this, we're not having shoulders around your, towards your ears, shoulders relaxed. And we're just circulating, feeling the shoulder blades squeezing together, keeping your bottom tucked under. That squeezing your pelvic floor in, as they used to have a change direction. If it's burning your legs too much, you can come up and shake your legs, come back down again, just squeezing the shoulder blades together as you go backwards. Come up, shake your legs, roll your shoulders, just to relax all that tension out. Okay. So the next exercise we're going to do lying down. So you lying from that, the knees bent. The important thing with these exercises, just going to take my so I can see you see. The important thing with these exercises is that we don't we get we get this arch in our back. Okay, so we're tilting your pelvis backwards. So if my hands are underneath my arch my back, I'm squashing them. I'm twitching my pelvis, but not so much that I'm squeezing my, I'm holding my breath. So it's really important that we still breathe. So I'm tilting my pelvis backwards, my tailbone is tucked under, and I'm able to breathe. So what you can do in this position is just have your hands just underneath your ribs and feel yourself breathing in and letting go. As you breathe in, you should feel your fingers being pushed away by your abdominals, okay? You can just put one hand on your ribs, one hand on your abdominals, just below your ribs. And I breathe in, my, my bottom hand is the one that moves. My top hand stays still. If you're finding that your top hand's moving, we don't want that, okay? That's using your ribs too much, that's holding this upper abdominal. So we're releasing the upper abdominal by breathing in to your hand and pushing that hand away with your abdominals because of the breath that's going into your tummy, it's called belly breathing. Okay, so your back is staying flat and you're using these muscles up here nice and relaxed because we're just going to be activating those lower ones. Hands on your hips, okay, in this position, we're going to keep, make sure these hands stay, don't move. So as I lift my opposite leg, I don't want this opposite hand to lift, okay? So we're keeping dead, st that dead still, as the knee comes up to 90 degrees, and then it goes slowly down without my back arching and without my opposite hip moving. Okay, and then we do it on the other side. So that's your level one. Okay, you can progress it by walking your feet away. So you can lift up. In fact, if you're struggling with level one, you can do a slide. So keeping your knees bent, you just slide your foot away and slide it back up again. All right, so that's the easiest level, sliding away. With my neck, can you see that if I tilt backwards, I'm going to get a neck ache. So try and tuck your chin in. If you need to have a pillow behind you, you can get a pillow. So you're lifting your leg up. What we're going to do now is once you get to 90 degrees, is to take it out to the side, about 45 degrees, halfway to the floor and back up. You only take it as far as you've got control with the opposite hip. So if you take it out to the side and, oh, your pelvis rolls, you've lost control, okay? So you're just taking it out to the side, not letting your opposite hip lift off the ground and then take it down without your back arching. So your back stays flat, your opposite hip stays still, you move your leg out to the side and your opposite hip stays still, you bring it back up and then you take it down. 
all the time you're feeling these lower abdominals are stabilizing and we're trying to keep this upper abdominal just relaxed by breathing. So keep breathing through each exercise. All right, so next exercise, you can put your feet together and you're going to keep the back flat again. Let your knees roll to the side halfway and we're going to bring them back to the middle by zipping your hands me. So you take it out to the side and lower tummy in as you zip that up again. Out to the side and lower tummy brings them in. And it's working by flattening your back as you roll back up again. So your back flattens against the mat. You don't have to be far with this if your spine hurts to be too twisted, just go a little way. Oh, you don't have to do it at all. Okay. Next exercise of the bridge. So you're going to have feet apart. If you're someone that gets cramp in your hamstrings from rolling up, bring your feet closer to your bum. Okay, you're going to leave this with your tail, with your pelvic floor. So squeeze as though you're stopping stuff in. Tilt your pelvis backwards as though your tailbone is just rolling off the floor. And we're going to roll up spine by spine. So your tailbone and your sacrum. Then each and every of your spine rolls off the mat spine by spine. Vertebrae by vertebrae until you're nice and high, your hips are as high as they'll go, and your neck has elongated. Okay, so you have to make sure that you lengthen your neck. And then we roll down, ribs first, keep those hips high, and feel each level rolling back down again until you feel your sacrum and your coccyx touching the floor. Okay, then you can let go of your pelvic floor. So you're rolling all the way up. Try and think about your knees. Don't let your knees touch. Okay, your knees need to stay shoulder width apart the whole way up as well. Let your neck lengthen. And then we're rolling back down again. Nice and slow, nice and controlled. Feeling each level of the spine touching the mat as it comes down. The variation is why I do it the feet away from you to make it a little bit harder. Or as you're rolling up, we're going to lift the hands up at the same time, up and over. Keep your neck long, and then we're going to roll back down, spine by spine. With the hands coming down until the back to the bottom. And then another variation is to roll all the way up. You can keep your hands above your head, and you can roll down with your hands above your head. You'll find that your hands want to lift off the floor. And that's because your lattice and the dorsi muscle gets quite tight. So having your hands above your head can be quite a nice stretch for that. It makes it a lot harder to roll because you'll feel that you just want to, that lower part of your spine wants to be down at once. Also, by having your hands above your head, it takes away the balance that your that elbows give you by bringing out back to the side. Okay. If you want to progress this even more, you can do a single leg one. So while you're up in the air, you can straighten your leg, but this hip must not drop, okay? You've got to keep your hips at the same height while you're doing it. And if you can, turn your foot outwards and then you get your inner thigh muscles working. The inner knee muscles, which are much stronger than the better than getting the outer ones working. Bend that knee, keep that bottom strong, and then you can straighten the other one without dropping, okay? So keeping that height. Leg turned outwards to get the vastus medialis by the knee working, keeping that bottom working, don't let it fall. If it's falling, you're doing too much work, you're not ready for that one. And again, bend it down and roll back down once you've done both legs. Okay, so just give yourself a bit of a roll. So hands on the, um, around the knees or behind the knees, and we're just bringing the tailbone off the mat. You can roll back side to side as well. Now we're going to put one leg down, bring the other one up, straightening it as much as you can, but with it slightly bent. Bring it towards you to feel a stretch of the back of your legs. We're just going to circle the ankle to feel all the different muscles around the ankle stretching. Change direction. And swap legs. Circle the ankle. 
and change direction. And bring it down. So, next exercise, if your knees are bent, we're going to do a chin lift. Now, it's really important that when you come up with your chin, that we're going to be zipping up from the bottom, okay? We're not zipping downwards. So you start off by activating your pelvic floor as they stop inside of you. You're tilting your pelvis backwards so your tailbone is just lifting a little bit off the floor. So I can feel so your whole of your spine feels like it's in contact with the mat. Once you've got that and you feel like you're relaxed in these upper abdominals, so you can prod your muscles under your ribs and they feel soft, you can pop your hands behind your head. So pelvic floor squeeze in. And then with that muscle squeezed in, you're going to roll up. It's really important you squeeze your pelvic floor in with this exercise. You only have to come a little way up. What's really important is that your tummy doesn't bulge. If you're looking down at your tummy and it peaks out like that, and it pushes out or peaks, then you've gone too far, okay? Really dangerous to do that if it's peaking, because you haven't got control. You could be causing yourself prolapse, and you could be causing damage to your tummy muscles. So you're just holding it at that point where it feels like it's working, and then keeping the pelvic floor muscle in, as you lower your head back down again, and then you can let go of the pelvis rest. So pelvic floor squeeze in, tilt your pelvis back, and roll up, okay? You can come as high as you feel comfortable, but you must be squeezing your pelvic floor in so that you're not bearing down. This kind of thing, if we're going to do too many sit-ups or overwork the upper abdominals, it's just a recipe for disaster down below. So just holding that position with a flat tummy, and then rolling back down again. If you've had diastasis, so your muscles split, then you might have to hold your tummy muscles together and roll up to give them support. Or you can wear some sort of band or weight lifts belt around as you do exercises. Okay. So just keep doing a few more of these. And roll back down again. You can progress. And if you're happy to, to coming up. So just the level where you feel like you've got control. And then you can take the same side knee to your same side elbow. If you're not doing a twisting sit up, you're taking the same side. Just get the internal things working. They're often forgotten. So you find this is a little bit harder than doing a twisting sit up. It's actually really good. And again with Pilates, you're just trying to do slow movements that are controlled. So you're not letting your pelvis, the opposite hip, lift up too much as you lift the leg. If you need to rest at any point, just drop your hip back down again and let yourself relax. Okay? So we're going to roll onto our side. And we're going to do my favourite exercise, this is the clams, the most important exercise. Um, in my opinion, because it gets your gluteus medius muscle working. So we're in a side clam, so your knees are bent, um, heels, knees, and your hips are bent, and your heels, hips, and shoulders are all in line. Um, we want to get to, to get the muscle working. If you find your hip bone from the top, roll back just a few centimetres. As you separate your knee, you should feel it contract, but you need to feel it contract for the whole movement. So in this position, I feel it initially and then it goes off. So for me, I need to roll forward. So my top hip needs to be rolled forward. And then it's really important that I tuck my tailbone under as well. For me to get to this position, my heels have actually come off the floor a little bit. So you can see they're still together, but they've rolled forward. Now as I separate my knee, I can feel the muscle engaging the whole time. You might need to bring your knees up a bit more to feel it. And you might have to take your knees backwards while you're tucking your tailbone under. To feel it okay so everyone's different depending on their posture but what is really important is as you separate that knee you don't roll backwards so you keep your pelvis where it is you might need to put your top hand in front to stop you rolling backwards and you're just separating your knees only your heels are staying together and you're just finding your hip bone sliding back a little bit behind it and making sure you can feel that muscle contracting don't do this exercise if you can feel this top muscle working. That's your IT band. Um, if your glute lead isn't working, your IT band tends to kick in too much, and that's just going to make your hip in or knee injury worse. So this exercise needs to be done properly. 
So the top hips roll forward, you can't really be too far forward, you'll feel it even more the further forward you roll towards the floor. Tucking that tailbone under, constantly thinking of that, so your lower abdominals are a little bit contracted. If you want to progress it, once you get to that position, lift an extra inch so your heels and knees are separated now. Take it back about an inch so you're not arching your back, your pelvis is still tucked under. Bring it back, heels together, drop your knee down. So separate your knees, then keeping your tailbone tucked under, top hip still roll forward, lift a little bit more than an extra inch. Take it back just an inch, you don't want to take it so far that you're arching your back. That's just cheating. Bring your heels back together and then your knee back down again. So one more, separate it a little bit more, take it back. Carry on doing that first level if you're quite happy just doing that. Heel together and drop your knee down. After you've done a few of these, you'll start to notice that it very quickly aches in the buttocks and feels like, like you, you can't actually do the exercise, it just stops you being able to lift the knee. Just give your bottom a tap. All right, that just gets rid of the lactic acid. Then bringing your knees up, dropping one knee in front of the other, arms out in front of you. We're just going to open out, trying to keep the knees touching the floor, and we're just opening out to get some rotation in the ribs. Then you can either stay in that position to get the sustained stretch, or you can just keep opening out. So, coming back on our same side, we've got our legs straight. We're going to do a side lift, still using the glute lead muscle, okay? So, to make sure that we're not rolling backwards and lifting up and getting the spine muscle, what we want to do is check that we're rolling the hip forward. I want you to be like a pencil, not like a banana. And as you lift your leg up, you're not lifting it forwards, you're lifting it straight up. If anything, it's going slightly backwards. And if you turn your toes towards the ceiling without that hip rolling backwards and you're taking that leg slightly backwards, you're going to feel it right back here, just behind that hip bone in your gluteus medius muscle. The other thing about this exercise is that my pelvis, I've, I've still got a little bit of a gap underneath my waist the whole time. I'm not dropping my waist as I get to get higher. I'm not doing that, but that allows my leg to go higher. I'm keeping that that gap under my waist the whole time, so I'm probably only going to get to there before I feel like I can't go further. So my top, top hips roll down, roll forward, my tailbone is tucked under, and I'm turning my toes towards the ceiling, and I'm lifting it upwards and slightly backwards. It doesn't really go backwards, but my effort of trying to get it backwards makes the muscle work harder. I'm not dipping my, my waist. So give your bum a tap and we're going to roll onto, it's going to be a back onto our back and we're going to do scissors. So pulling your leg towards you, other leg off the floor, you can rest your head on the floor, give it a nice stretch and then swap over. So pulling it towards you, nice stretch and swap over. If you want to go to a second level, you can bring your head towards your knee, providing you don't push your abdominals outwards. So providing they stay nice and flat. And you can just keep that position, again, with a little stability across your pelvis. So it's like scissors, you're pulling, hand behind the knee, pulling your knee towards your, towards your head, and swapping with straight legs, like a pair of scissors. Okay, so swapping sides onto the other side. You can might need a pillow for your head to support your head, or you can rest it on your hands. So we've got the knees bent, heels, hips, and shoulders all in line, tailbone is tucked under, top hip rolls forwards, your heels might touch the floor, mine lift off a little bit because I've got a bottom, a sticky out bottom washer. So I'm tailbone tucked under, and in this position, I'm separating my knee. And then coming back down again. Okay, 
you're feeling just behind the hip bone for that muscle contracting. You might have to put your hands forward and then there. Just slow movements. Slow and controlled. You might feel that your leg shakes as it's going up and down. Again, reminder, you don't want to be feeling it down this muscle, down this top of your leg. You've got to feel it behind that hip bone in the glutes. If you're not feeling it there, tuck your tailbone in under even more. You might need to try bringing your knees forward and see if that gets it. Or you might need to take your knees backwards and roll your hips forward. For me, I'm better if I take my knees backwards a bit more, but get my hip really rolled forwards into that position. And to progress it, I'm lifting up a little inch more, so my heels come up apart an inch, backwards an inch without arching my back, back to where it was, heels together, drop the knee down. So, tailbone tucked under, bottom tucked under, separating the knees, separating the knee and the foot, backwards an inch, back to where it was, heels together, knees drop down. Separate the knees, I'm separating the knee and the heel, I move back an inch without my arm back arching, coming forward, heels together and drop down. And one more, keeping the tailbone tucked under, separating, move back, back to where it was, heels together and drop down. And give your bottom a tap, just to get the belly together. So it's bringing the knees up, dropping one over the front, we're just opening out, stretch the ribs, trying to keep the knees in contact with the floor. You might find that you're tightening on one side and the other, that's quite normal. It's probably the side to work on. And then coming back to straight legs. So we're thinking straight like a pencil. Don't, like, not like a boomerang or banana. Try and make sure that when you're looking down at your feet, you probably need to see the tips of your toes, you're that straight. Your top hip rolls forward, use your top hand to balance you. Turning your toes out towards the ceiling, you're lifting upwards, and if anything, it's slightly backwards. So you can't, you, can, you might just see your toes the whole movement. You certainly can't see the rest of your foot. Okay, and as I'm doing this, I'm tucking my tailbone under as much as I can and I'm not letting my back arch in that position like that. That's cheating, okay? So the my waist, I could probably fit a pencil or put my fingers underneath my waist, and that stays the same throughout the whole of the exercise. I don't drop my waist as my leg lifts. And I'm not arching my back as my leg lifts. Okay, keep it on the tap. And we're going on to our friends. So, up to hands and knees. Just to get a little bit of mobility in your spine, we're going to arch the spine with our head drop down. And then we're going to dip the spine with our head looking up. So, we're arching with the head drop down. And then dropping down with the head up. So you're not rolling forwards with this, you're just literally feeling your lower part of the spine moving the whole, the whole of it, so it's up and down. Okay, now find in the middle position. So I want you to push your chest away from the mat, don't let yourself sag down. Okay, so the whole time you're activating the shoulder muscles to push your body away from the mat. You're finding the middle position so that your back is flat. So if you have a bowl of water, you don't want any of that water to spill in this exercise. Now I want to let go of your tummy completely. All right, so you might be able to see where to drop down. And what we're going to do is put the tiniest activation in to feel the lower tummy muscles going towards the coup de bone. So you're just taking very much of the coup de bone. Very lightly, you should feel a little bit of activation in those lower abdominals. 
If you do it too much, you're sucking under your ribs. You don't want to feel the ribs sucking in. So we're just lifting the lower abdominals, okay? And then relax. So making sure you're not feeling your, upper, your ribs sucking in. You can just feel those lower abdominals. I'm still talking. I'm still breathing. And then if you're not sure whether you've got them or not, what we can do is just move back an inch and then come forward. As you move back, you should feel the lower tummy just automatically kicks in. So the next exercise, keeping that back as flat as possible, we're not dropping as we go back, okay? So your back is flat and it's not arching as you go back. It's just going as far as you can, keeping that back straight so that water is not going to spill. And then we're coming back up, keeping it straight and pushing your chest away from the mat with your hands. So coming, as you come back, your abdominals are kicking. You feel that like the lower tummy kicking in. You're just getting back as far as you've got control of the spine. And you're coming back up again. This is a great exercise for the hips. And you pull your back. So your bottom's going towards your heels. Your back is staying flat. And then you're coming back. So as you back, and our abdominal kicks in. Just going back as far as you've got control and come back up again. Next, we're going to tuck the toes under. We're going to slowly come up. Heels roll backwards, going into a dog stretch. So your chest comes down, your bottom goes upwards and backwards. And then we're coming slowly down, nice and controlled, onto the knees. At this point, we can do some press ups. With the press ups, I'm really more interested in doing tricep dips, your elbows going backwards rather than your elbows going out to the side. Okay? And I'm just doing the female ones, you can adapt it if you want, but with, I'm hinging from my knees. I'm not sticking my bottom out like that, okay? I'm keeping my tailbone tucked under, my lower abdominals are in, and I'm just hinging from the knees and my elbows are going backwards. You don't have to be far. You can just go a few inches, you can go almost the floor if you want, but what I'm not doing is dropping my um, my, my lumbar spine so that my bottom sticks out. That just gets me backwards as well. You know, I want my abdominals to be working, I want my triceps to be working. I'm keeping my neck long with my spine, so the whole length of my spine I want to be nice and straight. Okay, I'm going to sit back on the heels and stretch. Again, if you've got bad knees that don't bend, just walk your hands forward so that as you're sitting back, your knees don't bend as much. Okay, so still get that stretch through your shoulders. You can drop your head to the floor. And if you have your elbows touching the floor, get a nice stretch down the shoulder blades. So come back up again. Tuck the toes under. Slowly coming up into the dog stretch. Heels down, bottom up, chest down. Taking your head towards that mat. And slowly back down again. Onto the knees. And crossing my feet again. I'm doing some tricep dips. But hinging from the knees. You can do it, make it harder by dropping your hips a bit. But again, you're still hinging from the knees, okay? So I'm not sticking my bottom out to do it, okay? And sitting back on heels, stretch through the shoulders. So, coming on to your tummy. Arms down both sides, just rest your head, your forehead on the mat. Okay, so we're going to do some deep shoulder blade exercise to do this kind of working. So we're going to be rolling the shoulders backwards and downwards towards the opposite hip while we lift the hands up. It's really important that we don't get just the back muscles working, but the shoulder muscles working. So we're going to activate the core muscles by tucking the tailbone under. Imagining you've got tomatoes under your Belly button, you don't want to squash them. So that's the position we're going to start in. We're going to roll the shoulders backwards and downwards. Um, so they're about 10 centimeters of the mat. Then you're lifting your hands up. 
and we're just going to beat the hands towards the ceiling. So you should be feeling this around about your shoulder blades. Your head's forehead is relaxed on the mat. You can turn it to one side if you want. And you drop your hands down, let your shoulders slowly roll forwards and relax your pelvis. So you tuck your tail in under, pushing your pubic bone towards the mat, roll your shoulder blades backwards and downwards, lift your hands and you're beating. If you want to lift your head off the mat, just lift it literally a centimetre, but make sure that you're still maintaining that pelvic tilt so you're not suddenly lifting by arching your back. If you're doing it by arching your back and you stick your bum out, you're just using your back muscles. So we're wanting to do shoulder blades and upper upper shoulder muscles rather than your back muscles on this one. So you can lift so long as you're keeping that tailbone tucked under. And then we've got hands down and let the shoulder blades roll forward. And then we're going to do one more, roll back, lift up and beat. Keeping the tailbone tucked under. It feels like you're balancing on your forehead, your ribs and your pubic bone. This is why I like to have a nice thick mat. I've got a 15mm mat. The thin ones just for me, babe. Hands down, roll your shoulders forwards. So we're done with that exercise. Next one I'd like to do is just a bit of a nerve stretch. So we're going to tuck your tailbone under. Again, you can rest your head on your hands and you're kicking heel to bum, toe to bum. Heel, toe. And again, keep that tailbone tucked under, pubic bone pushing to the mat so that you're not arching your back. And we're just doing on the same side, you can alternate legs if you prefer. And heel to thumb, toe to thumb, and swap sides. If you find that you're just getting cramp from doing this, just don't point your toes, just do the, just do the heel to thumb work. Sometimes pointing your toes just sends the hamstrings into cramp. Okay, and we're going to sit up, legs in front, and do some stretches now. So, crossing your feet, so you're crossing the first one, your foot is just the other side of your knee, then you can take your hands to the outside of your knee, roll them across a little bit to feel a stretch down the side of your leg down the IT band, and you're taking that knee towards your opposite shoulder to feel a stretch down the side of your leg. You can put your hand down. And we're going to take the body to increase the stretch. And then we're going to swap legs. So, leg crosses over, hands on the outside of the knee, rolls in, feel a stretch down the side of that leg, taking it towards your opposite shoulder. Noise. Take the body and put your weight on the hand if you want to. And then we're swapping. This time we're putting the foot on top of the knee. So if you're like me and not really flexible with your hips, don't worry about it. You might find that you're leaving right down to the mat, that's okay. So foot on top of the knee, and this time we're taking our, our head towards the middle of our shin, so that point. And you should feel a stretch in your hip, around your hip area and glutes. While you're in this position, just give yourself a foot massage at the same time. So get your, feet, your fingers into your arch of your foot, into the balls of the feet, pull your toes straight, get your bent toes, tight toes, get the joints moving. And keep remembering to lean forward towards that, towards your shin to keep stretch on. And then you swap over. Passing on the other side, taking your head towards your shin and massaging your feet. If you get bad knees, you might not like this twist here. So sometimes if you've got a bad knee, just pop your hand to the other side of the knee to support your knees that's not dropping down so much. Okay, so you can still stretch, you can still take your head towards your shin, but just giving your knee a bit of support. Getting into the arch, getting into the balls of your feet, your toes, 
straightening your toes out, and this time leaning forward into that stretch. And swapping legs. This time we put the foot next to your knee, okay, so it's resting on the floor. We're going to reach up, we're going to rotate towards the belly, and we're going to be sideways down, a bit like a ballet pose. So you now have the same side hand touching the same side leg. Shin or foot, depending on how flexible you are. Your top hand is reaching over at the same time, and you're trying to look underneath your armpit towards the ceiling. You might need to take your hand off that same side leg, or to the opposite knee, to pull yourself around a bit. So you should feel a nice stretch of your side muscles. You try to look under your armpit towards the ceiling. If you're really flexible, you might find this top hand grabs the, the toes and come up. Swap legs, foot is beside your knee. Reaching up, rotate, come sideways down, and you try to look underneath your armpit towards the ceiling. If you want to grab the knee to pull yourself through, you can. Just feel yourself get a little bit further with every out breath. And come up. So come up into standing slowly. So reaching up with your hands, one arm down, one arm up, sliding down your leg, bring your top arm over. You can even grab your hand if you want to add a bit of stretch and turn the body towards looking at the floor. And then come up. And we're swapping over, so reaching down, bring your top arm over. If you want to, you can grab your hand, add a bit more weight to it, and turn your body to look at the floor. And come up. So, hands behind your back, double chin a little bit, so you're just tucking your chin back to the ear to your shoulder. Turn your chin to your shoulder. Come up, take your ear to your other shoulder. Turn your chin to your shoulder. And back up, bring your hands backwards. And then bend them over towards your toes, bring your hands up towards the ceiling. And bend your knees if you like. And come back up again. So just a few stretches from the arm. So you can take your arm across your chest, a bit of stretch, and swap over. And take the elbow down behind your neck. I like to turn my head towards the opposite armpit, just a bit of stretch in the back of the neck. If you're really flexible, you can sometimes grab behind, touch your hands. I can't. And then swapping over. And then what we're going to do is put our hands against the wall, but facing backwards, okay? It's facing outwards. And then our body turns away from that wall so that we're feeling a stretch across our chest with your elbow bent. If you have your elbow straight, you're just going to feel a stretch in your elbow. So bend the elbow, the hand against the wall, and just opening out to get a stretch across the chest. And swap sides, so hand points backwards, turn the body, feel a stretch across the chest. And we're going to do a calf stretch, so pushing your heels down, one behind you. In that position, you can just roll your ankle outside the inside just to get the parts of the muscle and swap feet. So pushing the heel down, I'm just rolling onto, so I'm flattening my arch and I'm giving myself an arch. And we're going to stretch our Quad muscles, so grab your foot or put on a bench. Go a little, I say before, keep your hips the same height so don't let them drop. 
So let's same like try and bring your knees together, push your knees back, push your hips forward to increase that stretch. And swap legs. So we're going to cross stretch your nose, knees come together, push that knee back, tuck your bottom under. And then the last stretch we're going to do, you can either do it on your mat by crossing your foot in front of you. So you're kind of doing it almost like a cross leg, and then you sit back on it to feel stretch in your bum. Okay. I'll turn my mat so you can see what that looks like. In front. So you cross the leg in front in that position and then you sit back to feel the stretch. If that's not a good position and that hurts your knee, that's okay, you can use a chair. So with the chair, you just put your foot on it as you're crossing your leg on the, or you're crossing your leg on the chair, pop your hands forward and take your head towards your shin. If you're really flexible, You'll probably find that you want to have your foot higher. So, if you've got a sofa at home, you can put your leg on the back of the sofa, have it up there, and lean forward to feel a stretch around the hip muscles. So, you're taking your head towards the shin. So, swap over if you haven't already. This is one of the nicest stretches. <laughs> Try not to come too close to the chair. Push those hips backwards so that your head can get lower towards the shin for a bit more stretch. You can also move your hips side to side to get different angles of the glutes that you're stretching. Okay, and we'll just finish with once through the warm up sequence. So you're reaching up onto your toes. And down, we're going to roll down, zip your lower tummy in as we roll down to the floor. Big breath in and relax out. Walking forward into a plank, making sure that you're not too low, okay? So you're slightly arched, so it's not a problem. Push your chest away from the mat. You should be feeling it in your lower abdominals. Step back the hands length into the dog stretch, your heels be down, your bottom is up, your chest be down. Come forward, into the plank, lower yourself down, either by putting your knees down or elbows tucked in, and you're coming up either onto your elbows or up onto your straight arms, keeping your hips touching the floor. And then sit back on your heels or hands forward and your back knees. And that's the end. Well done.